some athletes are always looking for the edge that the latest technology will provide, whether it be drugs or gene therapy techniques. So athletes are using, uh, are thinking about using various kinds of genetic manipulation. But right now, the technology is just immature still. Uh, the th therapeutically, it's just beginning to have its first quite notable successes. But there's, there's a lot of ground to be covered before you can reliably know what's going to happen if you put some a genetic construct into, a, into an athlete's body. And there's absolutely no moral justification for doing that right now. You're more likely to do harm than good to an athlete. So I'd counsel any athlete who's being uh, peddled genetic manipulation to be highly suspicious of the person peddling it. Odds are it's, it's completely ineffective, uh, and if it's not ineffective, it's more likely to hurt you than help you. I'll start with that. If you look at the other side and ask what's being done in drug control, uh, I could think of two things. One is there is a new test for human growth hormone, uh, which uh, appears to have a longer window, maybe up to two weeks uh, within use of catching someone who's used, used the drug. Uh, and the second is uh, a new strategy, which has some uh, hopeful elements, which is rather than trying to detect the Ill illicit substance in an athlete's uh, blood or urine, follow the athlete's physiological development. Uh, one version of it is called the biological passport. So instead of looking for the drug in the body, you're looking for perturbations of someone's physiology that are not natural that wouldn't come about just from training and performance. And if you can find those, that raises a suspicion, and then you could have it in a process to investigate further and determine whether the person was using it. I'm Tom Murray. I'm one of the researchers here at the Hastings Center, and I'm also its president.